Okay, let me tell you how we're going to work with Stewart's Bakery, which is found in Chapter 3 of your book. Stewart's Bakery is, of course, a bakery. They have wholesale sales. Do you know what wholesale sales are for bakery? They might produce loaves and loaves and loaves of bread that they then sell to Albertsons or sell to one of the other grocery chains or markets. And that's wholesale. Wholesale sales are any sales made to a reseller. If you sell to the final consumer, that's called a retail sale. But if you're selling to someone who's going to take it and sell it to a consumer, then it's called wholesale sales. Okay? So they, have, they sell wholesale. They also do have a counter out in front where people come in and buy bread or, or pastries or cookies, whatever, directly from the bakery. Those are retail sales because the people coming in are going to be the final consumers of those goods. And then the third type of uh, business they run is a catering business. They might cater weddings or cater dinners or something like that, just as an additional profit source and revenue source. So they've got three different businesses working under that one roof. If you'll turn, first of all, with me to the balance sheet found on page 3.4. Page 3.4 contains a traditional formatted balance sheet with the left side showing the assets and the right side showing liabilities and capital. In the assets section, we have three different categories of assets, current, fixed, and other. Now, the first thing we have to note is that this is as of January 1st, so this is the beginning of the year. They were in operation last year. This is not a brand new company like we worked with with Barry's Gas and Groceries where we set up the original investment first and then started working with the first month's operations. This company's been in business for a while. And we have set up the balances as they were on December 31st. We have set them up so that in January 1st, these will be the new balances. What we went to sleep with, what, what, we, what we turned the lights off of on December 31st is what was in the business when we turned the lights back on on January 1st. Okay? Now, looking down there, I want you to notice the format that we're using. There are two columns. In the past, when we've worked with this, with Barry's Gas and Groceries, the column on the left were the debits and the column on the right were the credits as far as our balance sheet and income statement, right? We're showing two columns here, but we're using those not as debit and credit columns, but as summary columns. If you'll notice, for instance, under the current assets, accounts receivable, 6312 employee accounts receivable, $100. So we have in total receivable $6,400. But we have a $500 allowance for bad debts. Now, what does that $500 represent? Yeah, our estimate of what's uncollectible of that $6,400. Okay? So, actually, we expect to collect out of that $6,400, $5,912. And so, that's the subtotal over to the right side. Do you see that? It shows what we actually think we're going to collect. We have mixed the accrual accounts, as we did with Barry's Gas and Groceries. We've mixed them in. Is that $500 allowance for bad debts a debit or a credit? credit. It's a credit balance. Okay, and what do credits do to assets? Decrease. Decrease them. Okay. Okay, let's look at property, plant, and equipment. The same thing. We have the original cost of furniture and fixtures being $1,243, right? We've depreciated to, to date $85, so our book value is $1,158, okay? So the book values are so, shown in that summary column. They are not accounts. It is the calculation or the net of those two accounts put together because account for, the furniture and fixtures account is a debit account. The accumulated depreciation furniture and fixtures is a credit account, Okay. So our net book value of all total of property, plant, and equipment is one hundred thirty thousand five ninety four eighty, or five ninety four. Excuse me. Other assets, goodwill. What does that tell us about that business? They bought it from somebody else. That may have happened last year or five years ago. We don't know, but they bought it before. They paid for it, and they paid more for that business than the assets that they 
the physical or tangible assets than they got, okay? So they paid $12,000 in goodwill. Now the total assets then are $184,000. Over on the liability side, we have $7,700. If you look at just quickly in your mind, you don't need to calculate this, but are they in pretty stable condition as far as current ratio goes? I would say so with $41,000 in current assets and only $7,000 in current liabilities. They're better than a two to one, aren't they? Quite a bit. Okay, now if they were less than 15000 in current assets, that would not be as good, but they're well over that. Okay. They also have a vehicle loan for their company car, and they, ha they own the building, so they're paying a mortgage on it. And so those are the long-term debts that are shown there. What type of legal structure is, is Stewart's Bakery? Sole proprietorship. Sole proprietorship, yeah. Now, the reason why we do not have an earnings account in the capital section is because this is the beginning of the new year. In a few days, we'll talk about what you do at the end of the year and at that time we transfer the earnings the profit we take it out of the pro the sales and cost expense accounts and we transfer it into owner's equity okay so that the new year we have a clean slate in sales costs and expenses and that allows us then to start accumulating new sales costs and expenses for the year so that we can keep one year separate from another year you see that Sort of like sports. You know, at the end of the game, what do they do? I won't talk about last night's game. <laughs> but at the end of the game, what do they do? They zero out the, the score and so that they can start the next game with a zero score and start accumulating it again. Okay?